you end up in his jail, there's a likelihood that you might die. I can, I can yes, the answer is that yes. I can tell you that in our state, in our county, uh, inmates would, would have told me right. that they, and, and not just one or two, dozens of inmates have told me that they would rather spend a month in our state's worst penitentiary, our state's worst prison, uh, prison facilities, than spend one month or even a week in uh, Arpaio's jails. Which so also, that dangerous. Which also, uh, the penitentiary level, you've been convicted. You're a convicted criminal. Right. Jails, mm -hmm. as you explained to me earlier, are pending, holding pens. Exactly. They're, I mean, we as Americans have a number of precious constitutional rights. Those constitutional rights diminish somewhat once you've been convicted right. of, a, of a felony. Right. But before you're convicted of a felony, when you're just a detainee, you have the right to be treated like a human being. Right. And let me give you uh, one example of how bad it is in those jails. The case I'm about to try is the case on behalf of Deborah Brailliard. Her mother went into uh, the Maricopa County Jail System. She was a diabetic. She was not on drugs. There's no, there were no drugs on her system. They knew she was a diabetic. Mm -hmm. They refused to give her any insulin they even refused to give her a diabetic diet. Well, you know you're going to be liable for that. Well, one would think. But she spent, uh, so she began, she was begging for help when she was coherent, was, which was right. only for about three hours. Wow. She spent two days in her bunk, defecating all over herself. Dying. Vomiting on herself, peeing on herself. Yeah. They wouldn't even change her clothes, wouldn't even change the And there's bedding. witnesses everywhere. There were witnesses everywhere. There was a medical facility 150 yards down the hall mm -hmm. with doctors and nurses. Very simple to treat a diabetic. Very simple, and, and, but, but let's, assume, let's assume she was on drugs. Right. They, they admitted right. In, in depositions that they knew that coming off drugs, and she wasn't, is a life-threatening condition. Right. They wouldn't even, didn't have the decency, wouldn't take her down 150 yards to go get help from a doctor. And this is in jail. This is in not jail. The pen. This is in jail. Finally, the, uh, the inmates begged them to take, to take some care of her. You know what they did? They put her in a plastic boat, shoved her into the TV room, closed the door, and let her go into a diabetic coma. Did she live? No. No, she didn't live. She died. That's she died sad. A, a gruesome death. Uh, they knew she was sick. Uh, and they, they, they let her uh, anguish and die. I, I represented another case, the Axter case, where a 125-pound, 33-year-old who was mentally retarded, had the, had the mental uh, facilities of a 12-year-old boy, mm -hmm. was arrested for basically for loitering, put in the Maricopa County Jail System. Uh, they took him. Loitering. Uh, they took him uh, uh, when he was begging for help from his mother put him in a restraint chair, chained him up, strapped him up with chains and, and uh, bent him forward, held him down until he died. He, he was you suffocated, yeah. yeah. Um, and when, uh, when a nurse with these goons said, I think this man is, it, it were, uh, I'm sorry, detention officer, one of, the, one of the goons holding him down said, I think that this man is dying. This is enough. The nurse said, it, the nurse said he's faking uh, his cardiac and, and uh, respiratory arrest. How do you fake? There is something cardiac? definitely wrong with this system. Well, it, it's, it's a, it's a, I'll tell you, it, it's, it's quite simple, um, unfortunately. Um, but, but its simplicity is part of the reason we haven't been able to get this fixed. In his first month in office, Arpaio sent out a newsletter called The Roundup. And in that newsletter, he said, and it's right there, I want to have bad jails. Yeah. I want to have very bad jails. And when you tell that to a bunch of detention officers who are all cop wannabes, mm -hmm. people who have right. taken the test and failed right. to be real policemen, you tell them that you want to have bad jails, that's what you're going to get. Psychological misfits. They, 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 well, let me, let me, there's another thing that I think the public must know about. Tell us. And this is also something that helped the Goldwater Institute over the line to say this guy's got to okay. go. I've had, as I said, five out of six cases where they have uh, killed inmates unnecessarily in, in, in gruesome circumstances. 
in every one of those cases, we caught them destroying evidence or creating evidence. Mm -hmm. But that's not the worst part of it. The death is. But the worst part of the post-death inquiry right. is that in every one of those cases where we prevailed, some with jury verdicts, unanimous jury verdicts, mm -hmm. one would think that, like in the Axter case, the nine detention officers that killed that 125-pound retarded boy right. might have been investigated and disciplined. Right. They never were. Let me go further. All nine of them were promoted. 